Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium, where we are going to talk about model interpretation. So we know that models, when they make predictions, we can assess how well they make predictions, but why do models make the predictions that they do? Hence the point of this video. Before we move on, just a quick favor, can you destroy that like button for the YouTube algorithm gods to pick up? That would be lovely. The more likes videos like this get, the algorithm will be like, hey, this video is pretty sick, and send this video out to people like yourself. By just hitting that like button, you're helping us all out as a community. This is so much appreciated, so thank you. Well, we're going to be using the Boston Housing data set for this entire video, where the inputs here, let me just open this up. The inputs are a set of 14 features for regions in Boston, like crime rate and, well, percentage of businesses that are in the area. And the output, the y, y variable, will be the median house price for houses in a particular region in Boston. And so we have about like 500 to 600 samples in our data set, and we're going to be making predictions off of them and trying to interpret them. So let's say that I want to start by um, fitting a linear regression against this entire data set, right? And I see, okay, we're going to use the mean absolute error as the evaluation metric, and I get a pretty reasonable amount right here. That's great. But now let's say I want to do some model interpretation, understand what is contributing to this and what are the most important features. And so I use stats models and try to come up with this summary table over here. And in, in this entire pre-processing step, I did some uh, standard scaling and yeah, so they have mean zero, standard deviation one. And at this rate, I could look at the coefficients and kind of look at this and say, well, this is equivalent or proportional to the feature importance as long as they are significant coefficients. So some significant values here will be like L stat, which has a very high magnitude value compared to the rest. And this would be like one of the most important coefficients, closely followed by probably this dis, right? And so on, which this is reasonable to, to, to say, reasonable assumption to make. But let's say that I now want to change my model from linear regression to a random forest regressor, right? So the only thing that changes here now is like adding a random forest regressor, all the pre-processing steps remain the same, and I get another test MAE, which is pretty reasonable too. And when I look at the feature importance here, though, I kind of see something similar. LSTAT is still up there, but it's it's a little similar, a little different, not too not too crazy different. But uh, but yeah, in general, it is a different way of assessing feature importance because here I'm using a built-in um, method call right here, which essentially determines feature importance depending on the node impurities of the tree that's constructed. Um, yeah. And this is, though, very specific to these tree-based algorithms. But let's say now I want to change it from random forest regressor to a neural network, where now I'm like flushing out a neural network architecture right here. I'm building with PyTorch, by the way. And so I have one hidden layer with an output layer, no activation functions here. And I'm using mini batch gradient descent to process all these batches. And when I look at my test NAE, well, it still, it performs really well, probably better than all the rest right here because of its MAE. But unfortunately though, I don't really have a direct way to identify feature importance of a neural network, not with like a built-in function that I can just visualize, at least as far as I know right now. And on top of that, in general, these, when looking at all these three methods, I don't see like a single way to define feature importance that is model agnostic. So one way that I can just feed any kind of model in order to get a feature importance for, well, these, uh, for every feature. And on top of that, what if I want to know, like for a given sample, why it's predicting the way that it is? Like what is contributing to a specific sample's prediction too, and not just feature importance? Well, all of those honestly can be answered using Shapley values. And we're going to be taking a look at that later. But before that, let's take an intuitive look at how we would intuitively interpret mo models. Now let's think about this for a sec, okay? Let's first reconstruct our linear regression model. We have it, that's great. Let's pass in now a non-feature data frame, basically a data frame of just NANDs for all the features, and let's see what our model outputs. Now, obviously well, with all these NANDs, they're going to be imputed by our simple imputer right here, which is going to, well, right here actually, which is going to 
by default impute the, the mean value of those features. And when we do, we get a model output of 22.767. And this is, you can say, the, the expected output of the model or the base value, more technical terms. Now let's just take one of our test samples. I'm just taking the first one right here, and this is how the data frame sample looks. And we throw it into our model, and it makes a prediction of 15.851, which is 15.851,000 dollars is the median house price. That's fine. But how do we get from this 22,000 right here, or 22.767, all the way down to 15.851? It's because of these features, right? But how do I know which feature has contributed how much? Well, the way I would probably do it is just first take one feature at a time, like crime, and then try to vary up and down and see how the model output varies you know, with you know varying crime. Same, do that with ZN, how vary this, see how the output varies. Um, a good way to visualize exactly this is using partial dependency plots. So I'm gonna construct a partial dependency plot right over here. And for crime, for example, it's exactly what I mentioned. The x-axis is the feature, crime, and the y-axis is the model output as we vary crime when we're given crime. So um, this gray data frame, I mean, this gray, not gray data frame, this gray histogram over here is the distribution of all the test samples, the crime of, the, of these test samples. So you can see that they're all pretty low over here. And the crosshair is the expected values. So this cross, this line is kind of close to like 22.7. Um, you know, around that value, at least it's dependent internally. There's like an internal logic for computing this. So it might be slightly different, but it's around 22.7 that we discussed. And the corresponding crime right here is the kind of expected value of uh, this feature crime right here, right? Ignoring the red parts for now. So you can see that we have the same for partial dependency plots for rad. So as the rad increases, you can see that ex the, the model output increases. As age decrease, as age sorry increases, well the expected value also increases. But you can see that the y-axis is you know kind of small. It's only in it's, this entire area is not even going to increase it by like 1.2. So although age is a factor and it is proportional positively, it's not really that significant. So no matter what age is, it's not going to affect the model output that much, right? Now. Looking at the individual samples, so let's say I want to look at it, you know, okay, let's, the effect of a particular sample on a, you know, on the model output. Well, that's where these red lines and the black dot come in. So for this, you, you remember, I'm taking the same exact sample that we saw before where the crime was 4.7, if you look here. 4.7 was that, right? And if you look at the x-axis, that corresponds to like this part right, let me do that, this part right here, and you can see it's along 4.7. But the y-axis, of course, you know, I don't know why that this this dot is actually mispositioned. This dot should be on the blue line, and this the top part of this red line right here, this part should be on the gray line, right? Maybe it's a lot easier to see with uh, this example. Yeah, it's also shifted up. This dot should be on the blue line. This bottom part of the red line should be on this gray line. So for this particular sample, the same sample, the rad was 24. And you can visualize, we can see that just by going up here, rad was 24, right up here, right? So plotting this out, you can see that the difference in the model output from the expected value, it is it is now like something like 20, 27 or 28, right? So it has a huge effect on the model output, increasing it by like three and four, four and a half, I don't know, something like, not four and a half, it's like 22.5 plus something is 28. So it's like five and a half or something like that, right? And this entire value, this length of the red line, thus becomes the contribution of this particular feature rad by this particular sample zero, right? And we call this red line or the magnitude of this red line, the Shapley value, right? And so we can have Shapley values for every sample, every feature of every single sample in our entire data set. So I can keep plotting, you know, plots like this. The length of this red line is, again, another Shapley value. But, you know, this, it kind of gets hard to plot so many plots for every feature, every sample. And so let's say that for every sample, I want to plot it. I want to know all of these, these red lines f for every single feature for a particular sample. And so we have representations from Shap, the library in Python, that provides exactly that. I'm looking at the same exact sample. Right, remember 24 rad, we saw that before, right? 
And I am going to plot it for every other feature though, right here. And you can see that this gray line, there's like a little gray line that's going up here. And it says f of x is 15.851. That is the model output. And the expected value of the model output though is 23.376. We determined it to be like 22.7, but you know, internal features of like SHAP kind of have determined it this way, which is similar. And so the difference between these two is negative 7.5. How did we come up with, how on earth did we get from 23 here to 15.85 here? Well, it's shown by every single feature right here. So it looks like RAD had a huge impact by increasing, you know, having a positive influence on, you know, increasing the prices uh, uh, specifically for this specific sample. And then the tax LSTAT B and NOx had a good impact in bringing down the entire price. And so, we're able to visually interpret why exactly this specific sample is given an output of 15.851. Now, a cooler way to like, I like seeing a condensed representation. It's exactly the same pieces of information, but just not in a waterfall model. Sometimes this is look easy to look at, whatever you feel is comfortable. So now that we have, uh, yeah, this is for an individual sample though, but what if we wanna bubble this up to determine model importance? Well, all you need to do is take all these SHAP values for every single feature and every single sample, and for every single feature column, we are going to just determine the mean of the absolute value of the Shapley value. So column-wise, just take the mean of the absolute value. And so you end up with a plot that's like this, where the Shapley values would be proportional to contribution, right? And so we can see that for, again, this was a linear regression model, RAD is the most important feature, followed by tax, followed by LSTAT, followed by DIS, followed by P-ratio, and so on, right? And so I, that's kind of why I have like a note over here that says like what features are important to the sort of linear regression model. Um, yeah, this plot is kind of the exact same thing. It's going to give you the exact same information. It's just a standardized way of uh, plotting it out. That's all. Okay, cool. Now that we have a linear regression interpreted, even if I wanted to replace this entire network with a neural network, sorry, this entire model with a neural network instead, this is the exact same code that I showed you before, and we're getting a very similar MAE, yeah. And now I can just create a summary plot, which is basically, you know, determine the Shapley values and then aggregate them across every column, and you get, well, feature importance. And this is a very standardized way so that, you know, for any model that I want to create and any model I want to interpret, I can. And I can also determine it for every single sample. I can determine the contribution for every single feature in that sample, or for every single feature, I can determine, you know, the feature importance across the entire data set. So yeah, that's actually the good basis of Shapley values. There are, um, there's a documentation for Shap, which is the main library I used for creating these Shapley values. I will link that down in the description. But now armed with this knowledge, I think it'll be easier for you to understand exactly the mathematical takes on Shapley values that you see in documentation. I've linked to it in here below. And if you click that, it'll redirect you to, you know, this, this very nice and detailed like page on just understanding you know, like interpretable machine learning. I honestly recommend you to go through this. It's a great read with a lot of examples and also lots of good mathematical detail. So let's say that we have this model, right? It's a linear regression model for now, uh, f of x, right? And um, we could determine feature importance here by just taking the effect of the model minus the effect of, minus like the expected value of that feature. And I know there is like some, and if you aggregate it across all like features right here uh, of a particular sample, you get this expression. And this expression is exactly what we did. So you see f of x over here, f of x is essentially, well, that's the model output. So for that particular sample, it was like 15.871, right? And then this expected value of the model output was that 23.3 or 20, 22.7, whatever you want to interpret it. And the difference is like negative 7.5, which is the overall like contribution that we have for this, this exact sample, right? And this negative 7.5 is to be padded out with all the 13 or 14 features that we have in the Boston data set. So do go through this for more mathematical intuition. And I hope, I hope like this entire video does help you understand better Shapley values and also interpreting models. So now you can interpret any machine learning model you want with ease. So go try it out. 
It's really cool. I'll leave some links in the description below. And until next time, take it easy.